Greenland is disappearing. This global warming thing, yeah, yeah, Al Gore and all that. I'm well aware of all that. I'm well aware of the controversy and all that. I'm just saying, keep your eyes open. Use your gray stuff. So, anyway, as that era, as that era came and went, Unfortunately, by destruction, because they chose the wicked, greedy path. You know, we're, we're, we're in a horrible situation right now with all these idiotic wars. And now, with our economic situation, with the gas prices, with the price of oil, which runs the economy, with the, with the astonishing problems of the housing market because of pure greed on everyone's part. Everyone's part. The lenders as well as those who want to get a bigger house up on the hill so they can look impressive. I have to keep up with the Joneses. The greed was the downfall of the Jews. It shut their hearts off and they could not hear the message of the righteous and they killed the righteous. You want to know what their cost was? Death and total destruction. They were completely decimated. Could that happen to us? Yes, it could. It doesn't have to be that way, though. We have choices. We are free to choose. But there are consequences to our choices. That's the message of the 11Q Melchizedek Dead Sea Scroll Fragment. And I've got a lot more stuff on it. I'm not ending my analysis of the Melchizedek text. I just wanted to show you the interesting way that this 11Q Melchizedek ties in so beautifully with the calculation of the Jubilees and how those bring us right up into the Gospels and Jesus' life and era. Now, when you reread the scriptures, it gets real interesting, doesn't it? Because you understand more. Jesus makes better sense. <laughs> that, that's the pure beauty of studying this material. So anyway, thanks for watching this series of videos. I told you I was going uh, to give you lots of stuff on the Dead Sea Scrolls. They're relevant. Inter isn't it fascinating? Just a bunch of old, stupid, worn-out scraps from some dirty Jews who lived out there in the desert, thousands of years old. Pos There's no way any of that crap is relevant. The Gospels are late texts, you know. They weren't really eyewitnesses to Jesus. They're just written with an agenda, and, and technically they are, that's true. All religious writing has a point of view to share. Yes, they come as warnings. They come as warnings. It's happened before. Can it happen again? You know, the Jews of their day thought they were really righteous. While they were enslaving the people with debt, they felt perfectly justified in that. They felt perfectly justified in removing those stupid prophets who were crying bad warnings. Who weren't saying, oh, you're so righteous because you're so rich. How many times have I heard Mormons tell me that? better think about that. Just because you're rich doesn't mean you're righteous. In fact, they felt the opposite was the case. You think Jesus lived in a mansion up on the hill in a million and a half dollar or two or three or four million dollar home and drove fancy cars? You think he was the top dog, was the best dressed, had the most sumptuous elegant food and completely ignored the poor? You better reread that gospel account. <laughs> There's lots of surprises, aren't there? Anyway, now I'm preaching. I don't mean to preach. I'd rather teach than preach. You know what's right. My challenge is to do what's right. In order to help you do what's right, you have to pay attention to the scriptures, right? But if you don't understand the scriptures, they're not that good to you. That's the beauty of some of this Dead Sea Scroll stuff. All right, thanks for watching me. You have a wonderful life. And remember, 
Someone said, hey, I want you to do more imitations of Larry the Cable Guy. Oh, what a horror that is. But, let's get her done. Let's just get her done. <laughs> oh, my.